<laughs> that I like a lot, we like a lot. Um, today uh, on Late Nights, uh, we have uh, Flash and my boy, Hellenium. Super excited to have you guys on. Thank you guys for joining impromptuly. <laughs> Thank you for having us. Um, I'm excited. I haven't I haven't been able to do much with Kenra in a while because I've been so focused on all this MLC stuff. Yeah. Uh, first of all, who are you folks? Who are you? Why should people know you? You want to go ahead first, Flash, or me? You can go ahead first. Hey, everybody. My name is Helenium or Hal. I'm a part of the Spell Seekers. We're a YouTube content creator group for CDH. I also am the curator for the Advantage Blue Pod deck on the database. I'm also part of the Evolution Project, which is where I come in on Kenrith. I like to dabble a lot with Kenrith Evolution. And I have brewed one Turbo Wheels list, but I never got around to playtesting it. And that's about me and Kenrith. All right. And uh, hello, everybody. I'm Flasher Dreddy. I am the newest member of uh, the Reflecting Pool. Um, I'm also the curator of three lists that's currently on the database for Elsha of the Infinite, uh, a Kenrith list, which is also part of the Evolution Project, but it's a hybrid between Turbo and Evolution. And um, a Kalia Rasikev Turbo list that's been on there since 2018. Um, I've been around since about 2017 for the CDH format. Met my boy higher in about late or uh, mid 2018, and since then it's been a beautiful friendship. How y'all doing? <laughs> awesome. Doing good. Doing good. Doing real good. Hi- hire the goat. Hire the goat. Yeah, Bye. man. So, uh, looking at looking at Kenrith, there's. Uh, first of all, I want to I want to run through Kenrith real quick because I feel like a lot of people just think, oh, he's just a dude who has a lot of things, and I want to go over them. So Kenrith is a five color uh, commander with a one white pip and four colorless in his uh, CMC. Uh, we have his five abilities. His red ability is pay one red all creatures gain trample and haste until end of turn. Uh, he has one. Colorless, one green, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature. Uh, Two colorless, one white, target player gains five life. Three colorless, one blue, target player draws a card. And four colorless, one black, put target creature card from graveyard onto the battlefield under its owner's control. Five abilities, all of them relevant, all the time. They're so good. (laughs) They're so good, right? And we've all brood lists that utilize Kenrith in many different ways. Um, so Kenrith, uh, a lot of people look at him and just see him as a a value commander, but I think it's important to differentiate. Kenrith is probably one of the most flexible five-color options in CDH when it comes to being able... Because like, all of his abilities are relevant, and all of them are extremely important depending on what type of build you're using. So he can be anything from a turbo list, a mid-range grind engine. He can be your color splash and just add good stuff to a deck that's just doing something. He can also is extremely, extremely good under stacks list because of his relevant abilities for getting through with damage with uh, plus one, plus one counters and giving trample and haste. Really important for uh, stacks decks, in my opinion. He just does everything. He really does. Yeah. Uh, one of the one of the biggest things that I think people just don't understand, especially as they like initially start playing the deck, is how much of how much effect Kenrith has when he's on the battlefield. Like once if when when I cast Kenrith, and I get, if I get to untap with him, at from that point moving forward, my brain's in hyper mode. It's like okay, all right, every action I think okay, what can I do? Do, is there any creatures that need haste? Or is there any creatures that need trample? Is there any creatures that need plus one, plus one counters? Do I need to gain five life right now? Do I need to draw? Does anyone need to draw? Like, does any creature need to come onto the battlefield? And, like, there's been so many situations where there's been a wheel, and in that wheel there's maybe a Sire of Insanity is a good example. There's a Sire of Insanity. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, okay. Oh, Kenrith just wins if I'm on if, I, if he's on the battlefield and everyone else has to keep discarding their hands. Like, oh, okay. So I'm going to reanimate your Sire of Sanity. Or... 
or my favorite is I'm going to reanimate your Elish Norn and instantly kills my Dockside, and I now have a Dockside loop online. Like, that is insane. Yes. Right? Um, another important thing I want to like to say is uh, Kenrith does this weird thing in CDH where you mentioned it there. We're like, who needs to draw? Because you can't rely on yourself to always have the answers. And Kenrith has, the way his abilities are worded, where it's target players or any target creature, is that he's really good at politics in CDH. Mm-hmm. Let's say there's a Timna attacker, and somebody's got like a dork, and like they don't want to block that dork because it chokes them on mana, and they don't want to block the other dork and trade one for one. And you're like, I don't want that person to have a card. Because I don't have answers. Like, for two mana, you can just give them the ability to kill that Timna attacker. Yeah. It, yeah. There's cards, like, the, my, for me, the, my favorite card right now, not right now, but in general, is uh, Forbidden Orchard for that reason. It's like, oh, tap Forbidden Orchard, you get a 1-1 one, one dude, you must make him a 2-2. Two, two. Like... <laughs> so that's why you like Forbidden Orchard. See, for, no one already explained that one to me. Yeah, that's one of my favorite like lines it's like okay i have forbidden orchard and like no one sees it like no one sees that happening because mind you like tapping them tapping the mana is like you can't respond to this right and then she's oh you get it you get a dude and uh guess what that dude is gonna block your timna and it's gonna actually kill your timna it's like oh, god i've done that to yuriko so many times so many Ooh, times it's <laughs> <that's> so good <laughs> yeah so yeah, definitely has like this really interesting thing. A lot of a lot of tricks, and I do like talking about lists, but I do want to talk about a lot of the tricks that you can do with Kenrith that I don't think a lot. Oh, of there's so realize. many. There's, there's so many. So Let many. Me, I got one Go in particular. Yeah. So this one is a very underrated trick that a lot of people keep overlooking when there's ever a dockside on the field. Period, and you have a phantasmal image, whether it's on your opponent's side. Or your side, uh, you have a infinite win conless loop right there. And well, then, it, if it's on their side, it doesn't matter. Uh, are we talking about it, the fantastical be image being on their side? Or no, no, you no. Have you have to have the. You have to okay. Have the you just yeah. you worded that really yeah. badly. <laughs> yeah, we were like, wait, fantastical <laughs> image on the another side is not going to help us. But if we have fantastical <laughs> image for sure, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like you do that, and then like a lot of people usually don't see it because they'll just look at you say I stopped all your win cons and I'm like there's always a way in Kenrith to close out the game there's Remember there's that. so many ways yeah. it, especially like I've had situations where like I've had a phantasmal image a bloom tender I think a training grounds and something else and it just like magically in Kenrith and playing it just magically made me infinite mana mm-hmm through all these convoluted steps because I had the right color pips out and all that. And so I was able to, like, copy a phanta- my Bloom Tender with a Phantasmal image, give it haste, tap it, cause the and then target it. And I was still netting a mana. And I think I was able to make the infinite green mana. Or I made infinite of the blue, I think, because I was using the, the black to reanimate. green and red oh, yeah. and the black mm-hmm. to... And, like, it was... I just pieced it out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. Like Kenrith just accidentally makes combos. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I built, so the, the line you were talking about flash, the phantasmal image line. So I put that in a, like, I found that line when I wrote the primer on Kenrith, like, and the, um, the biggest thing was realizing that phantasmal image dockside Kenrith is a line like that. Like if you have those and then phantasmal is a line by itself. If there's a dockside on the other side of the battlefield, Phantasmal Image and Kenrith have like insane synergies. One of the biggest things that I do a lot of the time with Phantasmal Image is I will cast Phantasmal Image and it will enter as a copy of someone else's Gilded Drake. I'll steal a commander, then put a plus one plus one counter on Phantasmal Image, killing it, reanimate it again as a Gilded Drake, and like steal everyone's stuff. Like I've done... it, that's very that's very reminiscent of the Aminatu gilded drake yes loop, yeah exactly but at instant speed at instant speed and it's so repeatable there's like there's been so many things um most recently so we talk about accidental lines most recently there was a line that i saw that i didn't realize was a line until i saw it and that was um play to win had a video and cam played uh kenny evolution and yes line... did you also see the line he could have gone for yeah. the turn before but yeah didn't? yeah so like 
the and for those of you who haven't watched it, and the cards that you need for this line, um, there's a few of them, and, and it just happened to be a situation. So you need Wheel of Fortune, you need Phantasmal Image, you need uh, Eternal Witness, um, and you also need a Hull Breacher. It's <laughs> a lot. You need a lot of stuff. <laughs> but it, the line that he had available, he didn't see it, is that he could have his Phantasmal Image come in as a copy of his Eternal Witness, grabbing Wheel, cast Wheel, get 21 treasures from having Hull Breacher on the battlefield, and then he can do that line infinitely to create infinite mana. And then... he just targets his own... He just killed the Phantasm Image. Yes. yes. And, and yeah. he waited another turn and did something slightly similar. Yeah. But I don't remember exactly what it was, but I was just like, I was yelling in the camera. Right? Yeah. I was so <laughs> frustrated. But it it's 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 that it's those things like you just don't see it. Like there's there's like the for for me the the biggest I think the one of the aha moments I had similar you said bloom tender was if you have uh dead eye navigator bloom tender uh a mayhem devil and Kenny on the battlefield you can make infinite mana by just flickering bloom tender giving everything haste and just like you can do that infinitely um and that line came up because someone put a uh, null rod onto the battlefield and I was like how do I win with I don't I can't make infinite mana now how do I do this and it just so happened to like see like oh wait I can can I can and you have that moment uh, can I do that is that a thing I can so do? what was the line what was the line yeah so you have bloom tender you have mm-hmm. dead eye navigator you have yes because mayhem yep. devil and kenrith so you have all five colors you you have woolberg and then you 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 use the bread to give bloom tender haste you tap it you flicker it right etbs untap you give it haste again because you have a red floating you tap yep. it and then you can do that infinitely and yep. you just will never have a red mana it's important to note that the uh the red ability on Kenrith, I when I was first piloting this, I've made this mistake. It is not a until end of turn, like every creature. It sees the creatures on the battlefield at the time, mm-hmm. and they have haste. So if a new creature or a new instance of a permanent wall creature enters the battlefield, mm-hmm. it's a new, It's a by rules, it's a new creature. Mm-hmm. So it does not have haste anymore. Correct, correct. Yeah, so, yeah, so you, you, you float the mana, you float the red, right from tapping it and then you flicker it and then you have red floating you use that red to give it haste and then you just do that infinitely um the line i had was real similar except i had it the training grounds in play mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so it let me activate kenrith's plus one counter ability for a green oh yeah that's important that's super important and so i was able to make the infinite blue and another color yeah because i'd have to use a floating one for one of the white or the black, and I think I ended up going for... No, I had to... I made infinite blue this way, because I had to use the black mm-hmm. and the green, the white, and the red all on the line, and I was able to draw my deck till I found an, an outlet. Yeah, that's pretty sick. Yeah, a lot of a lot of people don't... Like, there's, like, there's things that you can do, especially with, like, evolution builds, because it's so... It's built with the idea of being adaptive. Um... You can take like in in the current iteration I have because I'm on the ephemerate uh, spell. Oh, right, so line. that's that line's also gas. Yeah, right. So the ephemer- and that's a plus of Kenrith because yeah. it's five colors. You can just throw efficient lines that layer well together. Exactly. Uh, shout out to Deke by the way for making up the ephemerate line. Um, the uh, so you have this really cool like so something that happens that happened to me. And I, oh, I talk about this a lot because it really showcases Kenrith's like ability to be cool. <laughs> and <laughs> there was a, so I did the infinite thing, right? So I have infinite treasures with Dockside. And for those of you who don't know how to do that, it's just Dockside and Meal. It's a combo. If you haven't looked up at Meal or Dockside, look, look them up. You can make infinite mana. Yay. So I had infinite treasures. And um, I was like, and no one had a response. And I was like, okay, uh, cast Thassa. And everyone was like, okay. And then one person was like, all right. And then I, I, like, I cast a mana consultation, and then uh, everyone's like, okay. And then I was like, okay, ETB response, anybody? No? Okay. And then there was one person like, oh, I have a response, Angel's Grace. And I was like, you <laughs> mother. I was so, <laughs> so mad, right? And I was like, how do I win? Because at the time, I was uh, I had a final fortune. I had resolved, and I was on my second turn. Um, but after that game, I found a line that actually makes it so you don't lose. And... Uh, all you do is, if you're able to get all the cards into your hand, you actually just Noxious Revival the Angel's Grace to your opponent's 
library, and then you pray to grasp the angel's grace. Ooh. Yeah, cast the angel's grace, and then you can flicker your eternal witness to grab your final fortune and cast another and play another turn. That's spicy. Hold up, am I on Praetor's Grass? I might have to add it. Yeah, that line is that line is really crazy, and I might have to make room for that. Right, mm. right, because that happens. Like that is one of the things that happen. Like and like so so many people, so many decks have trouble dealing with Angel's Grace. Another thing that's important about Angel's Grace is because it's split second, you can't do anything, but you can activate mana abilities. And if you happen to have a Mayhem Devil out, you can still crack your treasures and ping people to death on top of the Angel's Grace. And no one can respond yep. to that because Angel's Grace is yep. on the stack. Yeah. I know I've had a a game under on my Evo build under Trinosphere from an Urza player at my LGS. Mm -hmm. And I was against a Zer and a Brago player. So I was just stacked, man. It was it was hard stacks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I... And the Zer player is not like he doesn't have the most tuned deck. Like it, it stacks, but like that casual man, I'm ha people hate this in casual stacks. Mm -hmm. And it was like in a win a box or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I was on Kenrith. The Urza deck minus time twister is a hundred percent. I'm pretty sure. And the Braga player was just some Brago stack deck. So there's like winter orbs and static orbs and all this. And I'm just sitting here like man. And I ended up using a phantasmal image that I had hit off a of Sylvan library to copy the Zer, and I just started getting stuff. Mm. So I like, I, I fetched, I gave it haste after copying the Zer. I got a, first thing I got was a carpet of flowers, went to main phase two, made more mana. It let me play through the, the orb effects because there's an Urza player in there. It's mono blue for the most part, the land base. The next turn, I think I ended up getting out a training grounds. Mm -hmm. And then I ended up drawing into a Neo form and I was like, all right, this is the biscuit. I got to go for it. So I neoformed like a dork, got a dockside, and like I'm talking, there were artifacts galore oh, yeah. from these three decks. Mm -hmm. Artifacts, enchantments everywhere. I made like 17 mana. <laughs> okay. <laughs> off the dockside, it was, and I, I ended up, I was like, well, then I'm still into this trinosphere. I got a training grounds. I'll just, I'll just crack a few, dig a little bit. I ended up finding intuition, and I was like, okay, okay. So I cast an intuition with this. And I ended up getting a pile that I've never thought I would get in my life. It was just like dockside enablers. Yeah. Oh yeah. It was because yeah. like the phantasmal image ended up getting like exiled or something. I don't remember what happened. Like it was like I don't know how it happened because it should have sacked. So it was probably me misplaying somewhere, just being tired from all the stacks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I ended up getting like Mel. It was Mel Mayhem Devil and. Dead eye. I was like, this is going to beat through a Trinosphere. And like, the Zer player is kind of new and he's like talking to the Urza player. He's like, I might have an answer. And I was like, okay, I wonder what his answer is. Because like, I got whatever I need now. I just reanimate mm -hmm. this stuff with Kenrith. Mm -hmm. And his answer was Angel's Grace. And I wasn't on a Final Fortune turn or anything. So I was just like, all right, put a stop in your upkeep. Kill the other players. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to kill you with this Mayhem Devil now. And he's like, what? I was like, yeah. I'm just going to sack a bunch of treasures and put a, you're dead on the stack yeah yeah that's pretty that's a pretty brutal that's pretty brutal mayhem devil Mule is the and, best and card Dada. that's yes. not a thing in the deck i i will stand by it a hundred percent it is like kenner doesn't usually play stacks if you're not on a stacks build but mayhem devil tears up the current meta game mm -hmm. yeah mayhem devil is a is an absolute house absolutely Oh, man, yeah. So, okay, so there's a lot of, like, a lot of really interesting tricks that you can do. Um, I will say that some of the things for newer Kenrith players is to really, really get used to using your abilities because too many times do I see people just not, like, using his abilities because they don't realize it. And if you ever are going to, like, oh, end of turn, it's about to go into your turn, and you have mana, like, do something with it. Put a plus one, plus one counter on Kenrith. Like, Those anything. plus ones add up. I do that all the time. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah. Them plus one counters add up so quick. Because, mm -hmm. like, Cause like it, it only a... takes two counters to make him a three-shot kill. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, one time I actually had a... Uh... I had uh, enough mana, and I had ad nausea in hand. The t table didn't know that. So what I did was I gained 10 life. I was like, okay. 
now I'm at 47 life. And I was like, huh, I'm going to go for a very deep ad nose. And that, and what's crazy is when I did the life and I had cast the ad nose, the first thing the player said, I knew you had it in your hand. And he was like, why did y'all not kill the Kenrith? And a player, he replies like, who kills a Kenrith on the table? That's the thing that he said. And I think back on that game, the reason why I say this is because I feel like a lot of times, even though we use Kenrith and we know what Kenrith can do, a lot of people are not going to remove him from the table. So he just stands there and just values us a lot of the time. So yeah, there's a there's a lot of value in kind of being on yeah. the table. But what's what's fortunate is that, like, I, I actually I think that's a fair thing to say. Like, why why would I kill Kenrith on the table? And only because he's not useful until he's like super useful. Um, and that unfortunately for a it's lot like, of people, it's like it's like a Thrasio. Exactly. Yeah, it's like having a Thrasio on the table. Um, there is a. Uh, there's a lot of I've heard a lot of things that oh why why do you take certain cards out of the deck like when we originally built Evolution, uh, Bomberman was in the deck, and uh, people, and I took it out because I didn't like what Oriok Salvagers just did on its own, um, and then I we and then like so I forgot I don't I, re, I don't remember who told me this, but um, someone was like hey like you know you should take a look at uh maybe like the eternal witness lines that you can do with it and then i was like oh yeah and then we saw led docs or led eternal witness and deadeye is a bomberman combo um i still haven't done that one yet yeah that's a weird one that's one that's like like the setup is kind of odd but it you're really fortunate because the only time you really have to worry about interaction here is when you cast your LED after you've discarded your hand already. And you're just like, oh, okay, hand's gone, I don't have any protection. And that's, But that's the same weakness that Oriok Salvagers had. However, mm -hmm. I don't have to run Oriok Salvagers in the double... Yep, because Eternal Witness is always good. Yes, absolutely, yeah. So I just like that a lot. Um, the uh, There's just, yeah, there's a lot a lot of tricks. I, I didn't realize how much I could, we could talk about just this part. <laughs> Oh man, there's so there's so many like nuances to the deck and like, cause it's not like a deck like Golos where like yeah I'm gonna get this Besaju and my like I'm Turbo Nas and like he's just here to fetch this one card type thing, like Kenrith just adds so much. He makes so many cards that are like medium to good, just really good. Yeah. So, I like. One of my I like watch a lot of casual EDH content because I played a lot and there's a channel called Nitpicking Nerds that's currently doing a series where they're rating like they're taking the EDH rec top thirty of each color and like giving their opinions on it and like they had this one where they're talking about where a B like it means the card's good it's not like a staple in casual EDH but when you build around it it might just be the best card in your deck and Kenrith makes a lot of those like cards that are good. Feel like the best card in your deck a lot of the times yeah 100 percent. there's the yes one yep yeah i mm -hmm, i cannot agree with this more cards there are certain cards that i think are just absolute gas and in other decks are like whatever um i think i i think survival of the fittest is a great card like in general i think it's a really really good card in Kenrith, it is ridiculous. Like, like oh, discard a card, could discard a creature. Oh, yeah. I can animate that, get another creature I want. Oh, dope! It's like so sick. For the my the the line that I I like a lot is if I have Kenrith and I'm able to cast a Survival of the Fittest. Like, so it's like I don't know, turn three, cast Kenrith. Turn four, cast Survival. All right, cool. Okay, so that's two. Pay a green, discard. A creature get dockside cast dockside from that point on like i can win at instant speed that point on i can just ditch another creature to grab phantasmal image discard the phantasmal image for whatever i want reanimate the phantasmal image like it's like mm -hmm. I, can, I, I now can win instant speed thanks so good it's so good so, so good um so we've talked a lot about different tricks and stuff 
we mentioned how like for varied Kenrith is. I'm looking here. I got like six completely different lists pulled up for different archetypes, and it's wild. Yes, yes. The turbo list so, is so sick. The reanimator list is so sick. The hermit list. Oh, there's a lot, man. How evolution. Oh, fair magic. There it is. Okay, I found it. Yeah, the, their list is on the database now. They made it. Yeah. yeah. Where's it at? It's, <laughs> it's under Kenrith stacks. Oh, I was looking for a uh, five color control. <laughs> I mean, they are five color controls, but well, that's just what I remember looking for it as. All right, man, that's a lot of tabs. Yeah, it is. Okay, so oh, there's Kenrith stacks. I was wondering, and then King. Oh, and then there's the rule block Kenrith. Yeah, I forgot about that Pongo's list. Okay, so and there's there's even a Kenrith thief list on here now. Yeah, well, Kenrith thief has been around for a long time. That was Shaper's list originally. Um, okay, so, uh, evolution, um, we, a lot of the stuff we've talked about today kind of hit on some of the lines that we run in evolution, uh, the dead eye navigator is one of the key, if I ever see dead eye navigator in a, in a camera list, I'm, I, it's, to me, it's automatically evolution, because it's a, such an odd card yeah. <laughs> in any other list, um, but yeah, this is just in a deck that if Kenrith can do anything, evolution is looking to support that. Um, and some of the biggest things is being able to adapt to pretty much anything, anything that anyone throws at you. Um, mm -hmm. you're at, it plays really well under stacks. It does play really well under stacks. Yeah. Um, you really can do, you can do whatever you want. It, it's, it's like I mentioned that line earlier with final fortune. Like you, it, it, it's possible to take infinite turns. It's weird, but you can, you can do it. Um, and there's only there's a turn the only turn spell in the deck <laughs> makes you lose at the end step so that's pretty cool um <laughs> so there there's just there's a lot you can do um if you i'll uh, i'll link the evolution lists in the in the description you can see it down below um what do you yeah. have to say about evolution hal or flash um sorry i got a cough fit go on uh, one thing I'll say about evolution is a lot of people have a different idea of what evolution is than it really is. Um, newer people that are only familiar with Kenrith have this idea that it's called this because of the Eldritch effects and Neoform effects of the deck. But it's named after a deck building philosophy of another player out. And who's part of the Spellseekers? Check us out. We shill. Um, and Kenrith was, I believe, higher in someone else at the time. Was it it was just me. Who else was it beside yeah. you that like Alton, started trying Alton. to? Yeah, was it out on? So when when so story 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 time. So I played against Alton a long time ago, and he was playing Evolution Thrasios Bruce, and it was just like I looked at his list and I was like, oh, this is just like tribal win cons like this. That's how it felt. It's so good. Right? I was like, oh, there's only win cons on this list. Like that is super sick. And I asked him, you know, why don't you run black? And he's like, oh, you know, I just don't want to play black, whatever. And I was like, all right, well, you know, I, I like five colors, and I'll make a five color evolution list. And he was like, okay, cool, let me know what you, what you think of. And I, originally I did Golos, because cause at the time Flash was unbanned. And, yep. Right? And I was like, okay, I'll just make a Golos list. And because it had Seedborn Muse in it, and you can use Seedborn Muse with Golos, kinda. I thought it was there's some synergy. And prior to that, like I had been on Kenrith. Like Kenrith, I've been on, I've been brewing Kenrith since he was spoiled. Literally the day he was spoiled, I was on it. I, was, I remember. I, I was, yeah. I, I, I messaged Shaper. I was like, hey man, like, like we gotta make something happen with this commander. He's insane. And um, and I was like, Evolution seems like a really good fit with Kenrith. I feel it's like you, so good. you could do so much. And so originally like we had a lot of really wonky stuff in the list in the beginning. The first the first iterations had Savala Heart of the Wilds. Um we had we did all the things. We had Seedborn, we had, you know, Oriox Salvagers, all that stuff. Um and I was like I, I came to like a point where the the meta was not really calling for grind. And I, so I cut Seedborn Muse, I cut Oriox Salvagers, I cut Smothering Tithe, um, just to make the deck feel a little bit smoother, and I think we got to an iteration where I, th I think the deck feels good. 
Um, mm-hmm. There's always room for tweaking, and people can people have made some wonderful adjustments to their lists. But I think right now the Savala one is pretty hot. I don't think it's needed, but a lot of play people still play it. Yeah, Savala was really cool. I like the I like the idea of casting Savala, giving it haste, and making Kenrith huge. Like that was like the biggest thing that I wanted to do. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, yeah Savala is haste, and now Kenrith is an eight eight. Cool, I'm down. I'm down. And then it just fueled Savala to be bigger. Like that was so sick. Um, so some things I'll say about Evo because it's the version I've had the most time with is that there are cards in this deck and the the density of win cons it's so there's this thing where people think sometimes too many win cons is too much but when all your win cons just layer together and just magically work together in this perfect beautiful harmony that's what you call a win con list if they are layering like that well win con list decks just don't like their win cons are like eh like it's like (laughs) I'm going to loop this thing and it's really pain in the ass to do, but I'm going to do it, but I'm gonna do but it. it'll eventually win me the game. And yeah. I'm like, I'm not about that life. It's I just like... a matter of like the concept of win con is like, why wow, you're right in that aspect. The one thing is you're supposed to be running things that operate completely fine on their own, like very optimal cards. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. Like, like, like the Phantasm example, image. it's yeah. good. That that's a perfect example. Fantastic. It's man. good, but if we yeah. just happen to have a Kenrith out and someone has a Dark Side, we can win the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. It's one uh, of those cards by circumstance. Yeah. Things like Spellseeker. It's a one card win con in the this, but you might already have like a win in hand and just need to tutor a Silence effect. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got things like what am I looking at? Like I'm oh, pretty sure. There's a Deathrite Shaman loop I just have yet to do in this deck yet. Yes, there is. Yes. Like, we have Death Shadow loops. Like, we can kill people through combat. We can kill people through drawing out their decks. Like, if there's a stacks piece in the format, we can probably play around it. Except for Curse Totem. You just Oracle Consult on that, guys. Yeah, or, um, or, or Breach. Yeah. Or Oops. Breach. Yeah. <laughs> like, and things just work so well together. Like, I'm just looking at the list, and I'm just like, man, there's not cards here I wouldn't be happy to see in my hand most of the times. It's it just feels right. It's it's just something nice about this. Like I've played the other version of Kenrith I have the most time on is Kenrith Flashhawk, and that deck was cool, I yeah. guess. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. this deck, it's just it's something special, and. I like all versions of Kenrith. I don't even play Stacks, and I'd probably play the Stacks version. Yeah, the so like this, the evolution was that was in this was in response to Flash, and so like it plays really well, especially now where Adnaz is so prevalent in the meta, and Adnaz is essentially a Flash, if you will. Um, that like it it feels good, especially when mid range is on the rise like this this deck just fits right in that slot so dope super super cool my boy flash um, tell me about oh yeah tell me about your favorite kenrith build I'll say I'll go all right it. so my favorite Kenrith build i'm actually conflicted because i love my evolution nas variant and like i knew before i started the project of trying to combine the two Turbo General and Evolution together that has been done and people just gave up on it. And I was like thinking to myself, I was like, I I'm always been and I know knowing you higher, you've been like this too. I all I don't like having things left undone. So like even if it's bad, like I want to know how bad. If it's good, I want to know how good. That because there's always a line somewhere. So I went into this project not expecting much success from it. And I was like, okay, let me let me give it a shot. So I'm trying it, not knowing where I really fit. And I end up finding out I fit both categories. And it ended up, I ended up making it work. And once I had tested it, started putting it through games, running it on streams, I decided I was going to submit it to the database. 
I was not expecting it to get accepted. And then it did. And I was like, awesome. And my win rate has just been insane. Like everyone has faced it. So at this point, how has faced it several times. And he knows how much pressure I put on the table when I play the deck. And um, mm-hmm. when I went into the playing with power tournament, I was like, okay, I'm expecting for me to do well. I ended up doing well. And I'm just saying it it's just been a blast doing this project. And I can honestly say combining both archetypes is actually really good. And running ad nos is not gonna kill your evolution. While your evolution package might be lighter than the usual evolution, you still can get a lot of benefits out of it while also having the card advantage engine of ad nauseum in your deck. And then this leads me to the reanimator side, my original build. Man, I went back to it recently and I got to say, it is damn good. Like, Razakef in the deck, running a World Gorgeous Dragon with just two animating chants, like, all the mid-range uh, stacks, pieces that you can put in here, and just controlling the table with a very tight but efficient package of instant speed cards. This deck is is dominant. Like when I was playing it, it just it pressures the table, but in a different way. But at the same time, it it makes people slow. I call it the mirroring effect. Now, Kenrith is not a parasitic commander at all, but what this version of the deck does is kind of parasitic some somewhat. But it has the benefit of being five colors, which is a huge advantage versus, let's say, Mirren, which is a similar deck, but it doesn't have five colors. And then you can run things like Flame Scrolls, Celebrant. You can even put in Avon Mind Sensor, and I'm going to talk about that in a second, about Avon. Uh, Drain of Magistrate, oof. You know, the big ones, Mayhem Devil, Hole Breacher. And which makes all these cards even more beneficial is because of Survival of the Fittest, a card we talked about earlier. That card is amazing in this version of Kid Rift. Like, you can discard, have value to hit your reanimates, and then on top of that, if you don't need a certain creature, pitch it out, get a creature that's going to affect the table immediately, and just ruin your opponent's days. And then you just wait until you can just close the game out with Razakef or World Gorge Dragon. Like, this build is very devastating. While it's not faster than evolution by any means, it is a very nasty yet efficient reanimator build. What y'all think? <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I'm looking over this the one that's on the DDB. I'm not familiar with your list. Like, I've been looking over this Neo Razakef version that's like five color Razakef. And I think any deck that can support a collector roof in the current format, is an A plus in my book. Uh-huh. Yep. Uh-huh. Like, let me send that to you. But the list is really strong. Like, actually, this is a comparison from mine and uh, and Terrett. Terrett is uh, so about him and his deck. So he is one of uh, Terrett is one of the originators of Razakat. It was uh, in the beginning when, like, this deck even became a thing back in 2017. Him, Spleen, and Shaper had a big hand in this deck. Um, And they're the ones that kind of created this archetype. And it's been dominant since then. Kenrith gets revealed in 2019. People started doing the five-color variant. Terrence stopped playing Tim the Thrasios and went to Kenrith. Now, while Spleen and Shaper still did Tim the Thrasios, he showed that Kenrith was really good with it. And since then, it's like now the big debate is what's better, Tim the Thrasios or Kenrith? Because there's pros and cons to both of them. And that's actually something that's currently being discussed on that server. Like, people just don't know the real answer yet. But both that 
that just shows you how strong both versions of it is. And um, uh, I'm actually, yeah. I was I was gonna say Razaketh is just silly. It's so Razaketh so good. It's so good. It's so 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 good. And I think like I mm. there's a lot of variations of of the deck, and I I think and I think I don't know how. Yeah, I would say that I think we've all played like have played Kenrith for a long time. You're if you are like a Kenrith player, you you will dip into each one of these archetypes at some point. Like your deck will oh, like yeah. start adapting reanimator strategies and then it will start adapting stack strategies and it will start adapting turbo strategies like it, it just does that like that's like the, the biggest thing with kenneth having so many things and you and you, you nothing feels better than when you get a couple wins off of kenneth using a new strategy and that like pure <laughs> like rush you, of you know adrenaline. what card is uh synonymous with all these archetypes besides maybe the stacks version hmm. that i think is a really underlooked card that people that first pick up Kenrith uh, look over, hmm. which is usually like one of the best cards in the deck. Hmm. That's in Tomb. Yeah, in I think people overlook guess. that card so much. In Tomb is just with a Kenrith in play. In Tomb is whatever you want it to be. Yeah, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. Um, okay, let's see. Um. Yeah, so the re- the reanimator, right? Reanimator, and this is a uh, your list flash that I'm actually looking at right now. Um, yeah, it's just an eight card difference from the one that you saw in the Brewers corner. Big booty daddy. <laughs> That's yep. such a funny name. I love it. So the idea of running some stacks, but not like more like just like these hate pieces, I think is a great. I think is a great strategy. Um, and then also like. Running World Gorger Dragon freaks me out. Freaks me out. Terrified. Terrified of it. I, you have big, big balls, my my man. Big, gigantic balls. Because I cannot, I cannot run World Gorger Dragon. Like I, one of my most played decks in the recent weeks has been Mad Farm, and that was the first thing I changed. <laughs> I, I added Bomberman over World Gorger because it terrifies me. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I have it in there right now, but it's oh, it's open to be changed because. Like, the idea right now is because how strong, while it does scare people, like, I have a lot of silence effects in this deck. So I was looking at it like that, and I was like, okay, I have more silence than usual. Mm. Maybe I can get away with that. Yeah. So, yeah, definitely. Yeah, and I was looking at that. and um, But if I do take it out, it's definitely going to become a uh, skirt prospector. It's definitely going to go in the list. And I'm probably going to cut Animate Dead for an open slot for something else to put into the deck. You know what card I'm, I, I suggest hmm. over Animate Dead? Hmm. Which card? Uh, loyal Retainers. All right, loyal I mean, retainers yes, Loyal nice. Retainers are just it, though. It'll only get Ratchet actually. Yeah. yeah. Just, it's hard to be Ratchet. deflecting swatted. It yeah. allows you to uh, loyal survival. Was best, it was in this deck, actually. Mm. Well, it that's a good one. Uh, Necromancy probably we could get cut too. Probably add another counter. I mean, y'all live in your best life. I like it. <laughs> um, oh yeah. So okay, so we should probably start wrapping up. But um, is there any is there anything you would like to tell the people listening to this podcast about yourselves, what you guys are doing, um, and where they can find you? You can go here. I was patting my cat, sorry. Um, yeah. I once again I'm Hal from the Spellseekers. You can find me over on Twitter at Hellenium Gaming. I do fighting game stuff and magic stuff, kinda of my two big passions. You can also follow follow me, see stuff from me over at the Spellseekers Twitter, at the Seekers C D H on Twitter, and on YouTube at the Spellseekers. Uh coming up. I'm mainly just doing stuff for the MLC this summer, trying to keep it light. I think I might be doing the No Blue tournament, so sadly no Kenrith, that Mabs is putting on sometime in the next month or two. I don't know exactly. Uh, I'm probably going to tweak my Kenrith build in a little bit. I heard some good suggestions on cards, and I kind of want to try them out. That's That's the nice thing about just throwing ideas out there. But that's about it for me. 
I don't think I got much else to add, except if you're interested in Kenrith, you should definitely check out the Kenrith Discord. You can find it through, I think, most of the deck lists on the deck list database should link to it. Yeah, and I'll have a link oh, yeah. to it in the, in the description, for sure. 100%. Oh yeah, for sure. I'll show, and, uh... I'll show my Discord, not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh... For, for me, everybody, if you want to get in touch with me, you can uh, find me on Twitter at Flash underscore Andretti. Um, and follow me and my 3,000 followers, and we can talk about anything. Um, if you want to know more about the decks that I spoke of, you can check the Kenriff Discord. Uh, there's the Razzacats Discord, and also the Ad Nauseam Disc, the Forum Discord. Um, I talk about Kenriff on all those pretty often. You can also find me very active on uh, Discord in general throughout the multiple servers. I'm a very approachable person. Um, and you also can see me Wednesday nights playing uh, Reflecting Pool and on the weekends doing MLC things with my boy Hal, Southeast Represent. What and, up? Uh, <laughs> what up? And um, on Sundays on the uh, Reddit Discord doing party game Sundays where we're going to play random games on Steam, but mostly Among Us and Town of Salem. But mo- any games. And uh, I'll holla at y'all. <laughs> oh, flash. <laughs> the low-key flex. <laughs> yeah, you can catch me and my 3,000 followers. <laughs> Sorry, that's really funny. Um, the flex. <laughs> Um, yeah, definitely. I'll be posting you guys' links in uh, in the description. Please, if you enjoy this content, um, do whatever you want to do. If you want to like it, dope. If you want to subscribe, I'm down for it. But if you don't, then all right. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, but I'm glad you listened to this. Uh, and uh, we'll be catching you guys later. Uh, oh, real quick. Shout out to um, the MLC was brought up a couple times. That's the Major League Commander Tournament. I'll post a link to the link tree so you can see the scheduling. Um, really Shout cool. out to Callahan. Yeah, so you'll see. I'm gonna be. Um, I'm gonna. I play in it as well. I am gonna be playing Kenrith Evolution in this tournament, um, and so you can see it there. Uh, and shout out to the Spell Seekers, to uh, the Mind Sculptors, uh, to the Reflecting Pool. Uh, shout out to every all these different groups. Um, all really doing a lot of really great stuff for CDH and CDH content. Um, but just really, really want to say thank you to everybody. Thank you guys for joining us today and I uh, will catch you next time. Mm-hmm.